So uh, we move on to cross compiling temporary tools. So these are tools that support the cross tool chain. Um, this chapter shows how to cross compile basic utilities using the just built cross tool chain. Those utilities are installed in the final location but cannot be used yet. Basic tasks still rely on the host tools. Nevertheless, the installed libraries are used when linking. The used using the library uh, using the utilities will be possible in the next chapter after entering the true environment. But all the packages built in the present chapter need to be built before we do that. Therefore, we cannot be independent of the host system yet. And again, let us recall that improper setting of LFS together with building of roots may render your computer unusable. So, once again, check that LFS is set, and more importantly. You shouldn't be doing this part of the build as the root user. So the first tool we need to build is M4. So let's go back, tidy this up, should have tidied this up first really, but never mind. Extract M4. So these tools generally are fairly straightforward in terms of how they're built. And as you can see, relatively quick compared to some of the previous packages that we've done, such as GCC. So that's M4 complete. And curses is the next one. So first we've got a fix with this set command. Then run the following commands to build the tick program on the build host. So it's easiest just to copy and paste this all as one command. Uh, no, let's do it separately. Let's do it separately. Keep it simple. So make the build. We're going to temporarily go into that directory, run the configure command, make part of the package, which is include, and then make a couple of other parts called procs and tick. And then we're going to return to the original directory we're in. And now we're going to run the configure and compile the package. And the installation consists of the programs we compiled originally plus a library by the looks of it. I think I'm not quite sure the format of that command that might be wrong. What does it say here? Oh, it does look like it installs the whole program. It's just saying that it tells the install where the newly built tick program is. Yeah, oh, and the second line just shows some packages where a certain library is. A small linker script. Okay, so that's NCURSE is done. Uh, what does that come up? Tidy up and we move on to bash. A straightforward configure. Build it and install it. And then we create a link to SH for some programs that might use SH. And we can tidy that up. 
Now move on to core utils. Run the configure command with these extra options. As every time, as you've probably already seen, there's an explanation of any options that are new. Again, although I'm skipping past this, I thoroughly advise you to read everything there uh, to get a proper understanding of what's going on and why these options and commands are being used and to get a full understanding of everything about Linux from scratch and perhaps more to the point about Linux and how it's built. So that's built and installed. There's some moving around of some files and things here. And it says that it needs to be done because some programs hard code executable locations. So that's core cool utils. Oops. So diff utils next. Very simple installation. That's built, let's install it, and that's done. So now move on to file. Extract it, change it into the directory. And we've got several commands to run here, like we did for N curses. So create a temporary build directory, change into it, run the configure command. Run make. And return to where we were. And now we rerun configure. Compile it. Install it. And then we remove a libtool archive because it's harmful for cross compilation. And that's complete. We can tidy up. Uh, move on to find utils. Once again, uh, configure command. Build it. And install it and tidy it up. Gork next. So this prevents some extra files to not be installed before we run the configure. Build a package and install it, and it's done. So now move on to grep. Again, we've got simple configure.
build package and install it and tidy it up. Move on to gzip now. So config, you can see a lot of these commands are quite similar at this stage, they're just basic compilation for this part. And you'll see in chapter eight that the commands are a bit more tuned if you like. They're not quite so similar to each other. And that's done. So we'll tidy up. We want to make. Fix an issue that's been identified upstream. Configure the package. And build it. And install it, and that's done. So patch. Configure. Build it and install it. And that's complete. So now we go to said again, configure. make and install and that's done. Tar copy the configure command Build it and install it. Now move on to XZ. Which we configure. build and install and then again we've got a libtool archive a .la file which we remove as it's harmful for cross, com cross compilation tidy that up and move on to bin utils pass two so this first package that we're building again so we extract it again change into it oops and we run a command here set command as to work around some issue create a temporary build directory change into it and run the configure and you can see there's a couple new options there because we're actually actually at a different stage build it and also will this take a little bit longer oh it's actually quicker this time for some reason not sure why but it's uh, half the time in theory than when it was originally run Now we install the package and again we remove some 
archive files, lib archive files, and some static libraries that are not needed. And that's done. So GCC pass two, another package that we have to build again. Once again, we have to extract these files and rename them. I'm going to do this all in one go because as noted before, the only output that we should expect to see is when the files or directories are renamed. So yes, that's the only file, the output I've got again. And as you can see, I don't know, well, I might not have known which of these messages related to which commands. Obviously, the MPFR relates to the MPFR commands, but it could be an output that doesn't or it isn't immediately obvious what command it relates to. So that's why it's useful to do a command at a time, especially if you don't know really what you're doing. Um, just did, did that all that lot as one go for, for ease. So this one can run in as a single command. And there's another one here, one command on two lines. Again, we'll create and change into a temporary directory and then run this big configure command to configure GCC for the second pass and run make. Let's see how long this is. So this is a little bit longer, this one, 4.6 SBUs. So that could be up to, uh, what, about two or three minutes.
Okay, so that has taken three, nearly three and a half minutes. So let's install what we've just built. And create a sim link to CC for some programs that might use CC to build. So that is that. 